Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the new Adobe Generative AI Fill Tool and how we can use it in our architectural visualization images. So before we get started, just a little bit of information about the tool. For the moment it's only available in the new Photoshop beta version. If you want to test it out, you can go to the create cloud and download it from there or if you're using a more funky version of uh, photoshop you can just go to the website of adobe and test it out for free there online okay so here we have an image that i worked on in the past and we're gonna test this tool out and see what it can do so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the image then we're going to maybe try and add a few things some pot plants maybe some people uh, some clouds and stuff and see how this tool manages with all of that okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to extend this image to the left hand side so we're just going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to go to image canvas size that's fine and we're going to go to 1000 click ok so there we have this extended now so all we need to do is we need to drag this out over here and click on the generative fill tool and we are just going to type text in here and we're going to say extend image to the left and we're going to click enter generate and let's see what that gives us okay so this is our first preview usually when it generates something it gives you three different uh, options so we're going to just check what other options i've noticed that every time i do it it seems to put like a pole or some sort of a vertical element in there i'm not sure if it's because there's actually a stitch at that point or uh, it's really bizarre but um, this one's looking pretty averagely okay but if you're not happy you can click generate again and it will generate another set of three images so we're going to do that and we're just going to see if that gives us a better result afterwards you see this is even worse <laughs> so we're gonna check that out okay that so this one kind of looks the same as a little bit better than the other ones but we can just select this and we can say remove this object and remove press enter and hopefully that will remove it so with the tests that i've been doing with this tool i've noticed that you can get some pretty decent results but uh, the more you use it the more messy the image gets so i'm going to try to fix this tree a little bit just gonna say add tree okay so we can see that it's added a tree there it looks a little bit dense this one looks a bit better, I would say. And this one looks a little bit non like. <laughs> so I think we'll keep this one for the moment and we'll just try to fix this area and we'll add some more shrubs and bushes. So let's go add this and shrubs. So press enter and see what that gives us okay so that's the first one the second one looks averagely okay and but this one i think tonally is is better so but this is just a demonstration so it doesn't have to be perfect what i would say basically when using this type of tool i probably wouldn't recommend using it just as a as your go-to tool to make images but uh, if you have a client that needs an image extended really quickly and there isn't a lot of time to do it in 3d i would this is a good option to start with i'm pretty sure that they're going to 
develop this tool and it's going to get better and better but for the moment it's average at best and okay we're going to keep that for the moment like that and we're going to extend this image down we're going to see how it deals with the bottom part of this image so we're going to go image canvas size from the top and we're going to go to additional 1000 okay the cool thing about the layers that they that this um, tool creates is basically that they are separate layers so it's not all merged as one thing so you can always go back and remove it or go back to your starting point like that so now we're going to select this bottom part and we want to select some of the context so that the ai has something to work from and we're going to just say you don't always have to even type something in here you can just click generate and it will make a uh, a generation from whatever the context is so let's try that for the moment and we'll click generate and we'll see what that gives us okay so that's uh, not looking the best the second one is an averagely okay extension of the grass but i don't think it took into account these plants in the correct way so we're going to check the third one and that looks really nasty i would probably you could probably get away with it if you if you crop this image a little bit somewhere around here this could be more or less averagely okay but we're going to do one more generation and we're going to see what that gives us if we could maybe just get something better something with a little bit more structure i think we could maybe add a path going in the middle here kind of maybe this is a, a park that's leading towards this housing development or something so actually over here this extension of the grass actually looks pretty good we have to bear in mind that we didn't actually define what we wanted so i think if we actually uh, wrote over here in the prompt add bushes shrubs and plants i think it would have done a better uh, job yeah this one's all also not looking too bad it's a little bit stylized but um it's not too bad so i think what you'll do is we'll just select this part over here and this time we'll add add bushes shrub, and plants and now i think it will do a little bit of a better job okay so that's the first one we can check what the second one looks like and the third one yeah that one looks uh, pretty good for this demonstration and so now what we can do is we'll go and actually try to add some more pot plants for example so we're going to take this part over here and we are going to write pot plant and that pot plant is uh, pretty reasonable i don't actually mind that so much this one's also not too bad so i think i think we're going to keep this one it's a little bit dark but well we'll just keep that one for this demonstration now what we can do is we're going to add try to add someone on this balcony over here so we're going to just increase this over here and we are going to write lady on balcony behind the concrete and uh, this is the result that we get it's she's a little bit uh too big but we also have to realize that this is a still a beta version so let's give it a bit of a break we'll see maybe at the beginning of next year when they actually release the uh final version we'll leave her there for the moment she's way too big but it doesn't matter and we'll just check now for example if we could add some clouds into the sky over here uh, these they actually look something like candy floss at the moment not really the best uh, 
yeah i think we we won't be using those ones so i think i think in general it looks pretty good and i think you could use this as uh, more of a brainstorming tool or a mock-up for images just to give you some ideas and then you go back and do it in 3d um thing you need to bear in mind is basically that uh anything that you do with this ai tool if you have any other points of view or camera positions you essentially it's not going to be you're not going to be able to recreate this so it's always better to do it in 3d and just have the small additional elements done in photoshop if you have uh, multiple different points of view if you only have one view and that image isn't going to change much you you could get away with it um, i think we can just add one more thing here we'll see if we can add something a little bit more funny and i'll just remove this over here deselect and i'm just going to add a tiger lying on the terrace <laughs> we'll see what that gives us but in general this tool is uh, looking really promising and i think uh, it's uh, it's not a tool that's going to replace the 3d artists or 2d artists but i think it's a tool that can help you just uh, speed up your workflow and uh, it's it's quite interesting so this guy's uh, way too saturated um i wouldn't use him i would probably generate another one um but yeah you get the idea of what you can do with this kind of software and uh, what's coming in the future so that's it for today's presentation hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did uh, please subscribe and i'll see you in the next lesson